For centuries, Europe has kept its relevance and prestige on the world stage. Starting from Hellenism, Europe established the fundamental values of democracy and politics, philosophy and human rights, science, medicine, literature, and art that influenced the rest of the world. Many empires rose and waned in Europe, such as the Roman Empire that spread Western culture to Africa and East of Asia, and the Spanish Empire that discovered the New World. Humanistic ideas like the Renaissance, the Industrial and French Revolution, established a new movement in technological innovation, work ethics, and equal rights. Despite facing two devastating world wars, European countries formed the European Union that allowed for a remarkable era of peace, stable societies, economic, political, and military dominance, making them into a genuine global superpower. The sun has risen on an independent, united kingdom. We've left behind a failing political union, and now there are 17 million people that voted for Brexit. The raw truth is that the recent state of Europe has seen a deep political, financial, ethical, and spiritual crisis. Conflicts and tensions have left the relationship with EU members in an increasingly fragile state, such as the United Kingdom's Brexit in 2016. The big imbalance of inequality of wealth and power between West and Southeast Europe has led into a major debt crisis and financial paralysis, high rates of youth unemployment and migration in the hopes of a better future. The EU is struggling to deal with the challenges of the refugee crisis, crime and terrorism that are often linked to nationalist movements and political extremism. Europe is also undergoing a serious demographic crisis as the divorce rates are rising while the marriage rates are downfalling. Today, humanism and postmodernism are dominant influences in many European people's perspectives, and through secularization, standards for morality and integrity have been lost. Political corruption and general social instability have led to a sharp decline in trust in governments and overall hope. Before all of these endless problems, a question arises. Is there any hope for Europe? In Acts chapter 16, we read that Paul and his companions had been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, they got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called them to preach the gospel to them. God had hoped for Gentile Europe to be a gospel-shaped continent and a blessing for the rest of the world. God sent Apostle Paul and the early Christians to spread the good news in Europe, and many were converted and came to faith as they accepted Jesus as their Savior and Messiah. Soon the gospel spread throughout all of Europe, and Europe had the privilege to be transformed from an ungodly continent into God's chosen people and his holy nation, the origin of great Christian theology and a missionary sending continent. But what is the current stage now? Despite God's early blessings, the church has lost its way and is suffering from an identity crisis. The early burning fire of the first believers has faded out and many have lost their passion for Christ. Christianity has become a mere tradition and the number of believers in Europe has declined. Biblical truth is no longer being steadfastly proclaimed, and Christians are largely silent on moral issues as they seek the respect of society in favor of the government. Believers also compromised according to society's trends as they moved away from scriptural fidelity and sound doctrine in order to appear more appealing to the postmodernist generation. Many churches were abandoned and ended up being used as historical places for tourist attraction, mosques, restaurants, and coffee shops. Finally, Europe failed to maintain God's blessing as an evangelizing and missionary sending continent and has become a spiritually dry land. Again, the same question arises today. Is there any hope for Europe? In the 1960s, God's hope for Europe began from the poorest country in the world. 
from people who are suffering in poverty and pain from a bloody war. Just as God sent Apostle Paul to preach the good news in Europe, God once again brought back the gospel as he sent Korean missionaries for the spiritual revival of Europe. The first missionaries of UBF were sent to Germany, where they worked as nurses and served the mission campus. Ever since, God's ministry in Europe has been faithfully growing and many Europeans have been changed and have been transformed as Jesus' disciples and followers, as evidence of God's living hope for Europe. God has been faithfully raising new and young spiritual leaders through leadership succession and He has kept His vision alive through many blessed conferences, such as the CBF conferences and the Encounter Youth Conference. 17 countries in Europe are still waiting to be pioneered. Many campuses still need to be pioneered, and many more students are waiting for the gospel to reach their lives. May God send more workers into his harvest field in Europe. Come over to Europe and help us.